Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to another episode of Condo Insider, and my name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm your host today uh, for the show. And the title of our show is Bill 96 Redux, which means we're revisiting Bill 96, and I have a very important announcement to make. I came, not, not, le not more than an hour ago, I came from a bill signing, and this is what it looks like. This is what the bill look uh, a bill, the original bill ninety six, and uh, they'll be flashing uh, portions. There it is. There's a summary, and uh, the next page is going to be the first page of the bill, and the last page is the mayor's signature on the bottom left hand corner. And so you've heard it here. Now it's going to be on the evening news uh, because, like I said, I just came from the press conference. The mayor was there, and I was there, and there was maybe 20, 25 fire uh, personnel, fire department personnel. I felt I was definitely outnumbered, uh, but I was very pleased to be there uh, because uh, we, we worked long and hard uh, for Bill 96, uh, which is the, the, the clarification of the fire safety ordinance. And somebody, one of the, uh, the reporters there at the press conference made a note that the uh, original ordinance, Bill 1814, which was Bill 69, uh, that was passed uh, in response to the Marco Polo fire, that bill was passed and there was a similar signing uh, press conference on May 3rd. So t next, tomorrow, May 3rd, tomorrow, is a one year anniversary of the ordinance that uh, started this whole journey that ended in the signing of the bill today. And it was you know, really uh, quite extraordinary because uh, in between Bill 69, uh, which was the basic ordinance, and the basic ordinance for those of you uh, who uh, you know, are just joining the conversation now, uh, Bill 69 and Ordinance 1814 requires all high-rise buildings over 10 stories, 10 stories or over, uh, to have a, a fire uh, sprinkler system throughout protecting the building. That means in the units and in the hallways, unless uh, you have open exterior corridors, and that means when you walk out of your unit and there's just air. That means you have an open uh, exterior corridor. In other words, if you open your door and you see across the hallway another unit or a wall, that means you have enclosed uh, interior corridors. And so uh, you would have to install a fire sprinkler system or do a, something called a life safety evaluation. And so that's, that, that's, that's you know, in, in a you know, in in a brief summary, is what that bill was all about. And one of the provisions in the original ordinance allowed a building to opt out, uh, uh, saying that you know they didn't uh, want to do sprinklers and they had enclosed interior corridors. And in that case, you know, you would have to uh, post notices uh, in the building and notify any new owners perspective uh, or the, uh, the, the unit owners in your building who were selling their units would have to disclose uh, the fact that they had no uh, fire sprinklers in the building uh, to prospective uh, buyers. And so, so that's where it sat. And then uh, after the bill was passed and um, the, it, the began the hard problem of trying to implement it. And because the, the, this bill is so comprehensive, uh, the, one of the issues was, what buildings does the law apply to? And so, you know, we've been going round and round, uh, and the fire department keeps submitting lists, and the lists, you know, w when they appear, uh, I would get calls, the council members would get calls, and they would say, why is my building on, on the list? Or why isn't my building on the list? Do we still have to comply? And, and, and that was one of the reasons uh, for uh, Bill 9, uh, 96. It's because uh, people weren't sure 
whether or not the law applied to them, and, and if so, what deadlines uh, applied, you know, would be applicable to them. Uh, and, you know, the, the bill has got two very important, well, three very, very important deadlines. One is already passed. In other words, if you were one of the buildings that were subject to the law, you had to, by uh, November 1 of, of 2018, submit a letter uh, to the fire department, the Honolulu Fire Department, that you would comply with the law. Okay, so, and, and if you weren't one of the buildings, you know, who were on the original list, of course, you could not have complied with that requirement because you, you weren't on the list. And in this bill that just passed, Bill 96, and it's public information, so you can go on the city website and look at it. The list of buildings is attached to the ordinance, uh, this new ordinance. And if your building is on that list, that means you need to comply. And, um, and, and this list that is now on uh, Bill 96 is, I think, the fifth list that the fire department submitted. And uh, by all accounts, everybody who look, kind of looked at it said, well, that's pretty close. And, and, and the number changed. It changed from like 390. It went down to uh, 367. I think it's up to 370 now. And if for some reason some other buildings come to the uh, fire department's attention and they get added to the list, the, there is going to be a current list of buildings and you have to go to the fire department website. And there is the, the, that's where you'll find the most current list of buildings. And so you're, let's say you were a building that wasn't on the original list, uh, or maybe you didn't know you were supposed to comply with this law or that the law applied to you. And now you look at Bill 96 and you see, oh my God, my building's on the list. And it was, not, it was not there before. What do I do? Well, the first thing you do is you need to submit a letter to the fire department saying that you're going to comply. And uh, at this point, uh, there, uh, if you act quickly, the fire department is not going to uh, take steps to find you in violation. And uh, one other, uh, the, the second deadline in the, in the ordinance is within three years of the uh, initial date of the law, which would have been May 3, 2018. And as I told you, tomorrow's the anniversary. It's a one-year anniversary. So already one year has gone by, so that means you only have two years to do a life safety evaluation because the original bill said that you had three years from the date of enactment to do a life safety evaluation. So now that we're hitting the one year anniversary, you have two years left to do uh, a life safety evaluation. And before I explain to you what a life safety evaluation is, I'm gonna tell you what the third deadline is. The third deadline is once you go through a life safety evaluation and assuming you don't get a passing score, then what you have to do is you have to make all these repairs uh, that, was, that you know, was pointed out by the licensed professionals who did your life safety evaluation, and you have to get them repaired, or you have to install the fire sprinkler system throughout the building. And that, for that work, you have additional six years from the first three-year uh, deadline. Okay? Now, What's a life safety evaluation? A life safety evaluation is a, a, an inspection of the building by licensed professionals, and um, they are looking at 17 items uh, that appear on uh, a list that uh, the, 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 we've been calling the matrix. It's a spreadsheet, and it is available to the public on the fire department website. And there's like 17 items on this list so that if you want to know what's being inspected, you go on the website and you, you look at it. And, you know, some of the things on that list you can't change, like the height of the building. If you're a 12-story building, uh, you can't change that. Uh, and, and, and the reason of, for the height of the building as being a factor is the higher the building, the, the harder it is for people to get out of it and the harder it is for first responders uh, to get into the building to address the emergency. So the higher the building, the higher the risk factor. 
Another issue is mobility. And th that's something that I'm going to get into later. But mobility is uh, whether or not people are going to need assistance in getting out of the building. So if you have a, a situation where you've got a lot of people who need assistance, then it, it's going to be harder to get them out of the building. And, it, and that means that there's going to be more work uh, for the first responders because now they've got to get these uh, people who have uh, mobility issues, which means that you have a hard time getting around out of the building uh, before they can address the emergency. And so that makes uh, your score higher, you, you know, makes it harder to pass. And then there are things like standpipes, whether or not you have standpipes uh, in your um, hallways. And, and um, there are other things that you can change. Those things you can't change because they're structural. And then there are things that you can change, like fire rated doors. Uh, you, some of you may he have heard that with the Marco Polo, they had doors with louvers which are uh, not compliant with the building code because, you know, it allows the fire to spread. And so a fire uh, rated door does not have louvers in it, and it has a metal closure at the top of the door which makes the door close automatically. And so, you know, if you don't have uh, the, the fire rated doors with the metal closures, this is something that, you know, the association can fix. And that's a lot cheaper than putting in fire sprinklers. And things like an emergency evacuation. Do you have an emergency evacuation plan? And that can be as simple as having a graphic drawing with the floor plan and, 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 and you know, where are the exits and maybe a line as to how you exit the building. And if you have a, an emergency uh, evacuation plan and it's maybe posted on the wall on every floor and in the common areas and on a bulletin board somewhere or you know you pass it out to so that every unit has got you know the emergency evacuation plan maybe posted on you know in their unit you know that 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 would be you know that would be something uh that um uh you know you can uh address and you can do something about if you don't have one you you need to make one and uh so, so you have to look at the list and uh, smoke detectors, smoke alarm systems, uh, and uh, you know. So you need to look at the the uh, matrix to figure out exactly what things you can't change and maybe start taking steps to address them before you uh, contact your licensed professional uh, to do this inspection. And when they come and do the inspection, they will use something called the matrix. And like I said, the matrix is on the website on the fire department website and it 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 it, it tells you what conditions uh, you have to meet and 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 if you don't have those conditions like the the fire rated doors with the metal closures then you get minus points and and the person who is doing the uh, inspection you know will inspect all of the 17 items and come up with a score and when they come up with a score the score will tell you what repairs or how, how, what upgrades you have to make and then you would uh, use that licensed professional to get that information and then you the association can make an informed decision as to what repairs uh they need to make because the the person who did the inspection can tell you oh well you know you missed the passing score by two points or by four points and that's the time that you would say to the the licensed professional well what do we have to do to get a passing score and that's when uh, you, th they can make suggestions uh, regarding the repairs that you have to make. And, and then you can determine uh, wh what the costs are for those repairs and compare them as to what it would cost to install the sprinklers. And that way the association can make an informed decision as to um, whether or not they want to do the repairs uh, that, that are suggested by the um, the life safety evaluation, or whether they want to install sprinklers. And we're going to take a one minute break now, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about what happened with Bill 96. How did. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at three, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. 
We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday, alive at five. I'll see you there. Okay, welcome back to uh, another uh, episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is Jane Sugimura, I'm your host today. And we're going to be talking about Bill 96 that was signed into law. It was signed into law by Mayor Caldwell uh, at 1.30 this afternoon. And so you're probably saying, well, why, you know, so what, what is it with uh, Bill 96? And, and how does it change the fire safety uh, uh, ordinance that was passed almost a year ago? In fact, it's going to be a year tomorrow, May 3rd. And there are some changes, mainly because you know, it was, there were a lot of questions by the licensed professionals and by the associations as to how this bill was going to be implemented. And, uh, and because it's a new thing, it's a new uh, requirement imposed by the city on almost 370 high-rise buildings. So this is a big deal. And, you know, so, so the, uh, the council members and Kobayashi and uh, Carol Fukunaga introduced uh, Bill 96 to get clarification. And, and one of the big things was, who does this law apply to? That's why it's really important. And if you didn't think the bill applied to you, I, I suggest that you want to look at the list of buildings attached to uh, Bill 96, which is available on the city's website because there's a list of buildings there, and there's a list of buildings on the Honolulu Fire Department website. And if, you're, if your building name is on there, that means that you, the, uh, the ordinance applies to you. And uh, there were several lists of buildings that were uh, submitted to the city. And this one is the most current one. And, 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 and people were calling us, saying, how come they were on the list? They had fire sprinklers. They shouldn't be on the list. And, and, and the fire department agreed, and so they made those changes. They also made changes for buildings because the buildings are categorized as having exterior quarters or interior quarters. Exterior quarters means that you don't have to put in, the, the, you're exempt from putting in the fire sprinkler system in your building. You just have to do the life safety evaluation. Okay, what changes happen other than, you know, what buildings, oh, and, you know, with the buildings, there are these deadlines that apply to you. And because um, the, uh, you know, the, when, you, when, when you have to do the repairs uh, specified by the life uh, safety evaluation, if you apply for a permit and it takes you more than 90 days, and those of us who sit on condo boards know that, you know, applying for a, for a permit you don't get them back in 90 days. I mean, I've got one for my building. We're waiting six months, and we may be getting it soon. That's what I'm hearing. But anyway, 90 days is, 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 is a really short time. And, and, and so the, uh, the ordinance says that if you don't get your permit approved to do your repairs within 90 days, then you, your, uh, the deadline, the six-year deadline for compliance is extended for the time it takes the city to approve your permit. And to, at today's bill signing, Mayor Caldwell assured us that he had talked to his Department of Planning and Permitting, and they were instructed to expedite all of the repair permit applications from condo associations relating to the life safety evaluations, and that because they're relying on third party uh, evaluators, uh, 
they don't believe that any permit approvals are going to take more than 90 days. Of course, that remains to be seen. And I will uh, believe it when I see it. And so I'm uh, cautiously optimistic that that will be the case. But now the bill has a provision in there that says, if the city doesn't approve your permit within the 90 days, you get an extension. And the reason why that's so important is the fire department in the testimony on this bill gave verbal assurance that that's what they would do. But because, you know, uh, we, we, we insisted that we don't want to rely on verbal assurance from the fire department. I'm sure that in good faith that this is what they really believe would happen, but we don't know who's going to be in charge uh, in the future. So we want it codified so that if, we, if a building needs to get an extension, that they would be entitled to one. And so that, that's a change uh, that you know, is in the ordinance. And another change that's in the ordinance allows uh, association uh, uh, employees to help do some of the inspections uh, for the licensed professionals. And that would mean, you know, looking, uh, uh, going throughout the building and reporting on uh, fire rated doors and metal closures and smoke detectors in the units. And if they, and, and so if you, you know, in, in connection with doing a life safety evaluation, what you can do is, you know, when you, uh, you know, you can have your maintenance people, you know, do the inspection, uh, make a spreadsheet, give it to the licensed professional so that all they have to do is do a random sampling of the people, of the information that's on the spreadsheet that's prepared by the association staff. And that's going to save you uh, a ton of money uh, when you do your life safety evaluation. And, you know, one of the, um, uh, uh, one of the things, too, uh, that uh, is uh, very important uh, with this uh, bill is the fact that um, this is not a done deal. I mean, the, the way the bill is set up, because this is such a huge undertaking, we're talking about 370 buildings, uh, at least 370 buildings that are subject to the law, and at least two thirds of those buildings have interior corridors. And so they will have to do life safety evaluations and maybe do some repairs. And because right now we don't know uh, what kind of issues are gonna pop up, I mean, the fire department may have issues of, regarding compliance and the associations may have issues regarding how the inspections are actually done and how the results are reported. So the council has indicated, has, has specified in the ordinance that there will be reviews every six months uh, for the first, uh, up until 2022. And this is a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing for the, the fire department that has to um, uh, uh, enforce the, the ordinance. And it's a good thing for the licensed professionals uh, and the um, associations who have to do the life safety evaluation. Uh, I, was, I, I learned at the uh, bill signing today that uh, five buildings in uh, Honolulu have completed their life safety evaluation. And there are about 30 more kind of like in the pipeline who have started the life safety evaluation. So, um, you know, uh, it's starting. It's starting and, and we don't know what kind of issues are going to come up. And, uh, you know, and, and if they do come up, because this uh, uh, Bill 96 provides for a uh, six-month review uh, for the first uh, three years of the bill, then every, all, the, all the stakeholders, the fire department, the associations, and the licensed professionals can all, you know, weigh in and, you know, uh, meet with the city and, uh, you know, make further changes that may, may be necessary. And, you know, one of the issues when we were, uh, you know, negotiating these changes that, that I raised, you know, with the uh, city and the fire department, the, the bill, the, this bill, the fire safety uh, bill is patterned, is modeled after a bill that was passed by the city of Chicago. And they have a, a similar uh, type of uh, uh, inspection 
But in their bill in Chicago, and they have about a thousand, they have about a thousand high rise uh, residential buildings. They do not have a mandatory fire sprinkler component in their bill, although they do have uh, uh, something that's similar to a life safety valuation. And in the Chicago ordinance, those, um, the, the uh, fire department is required to post the compliance information on their website. In other words, what buildings have complied, which buildings have not complied, and you know, what, are, what exactly are the compliance issues. And uh, although you know, the fire department, our fire department, the Honolulu Fire Department was reluctant uh, to include those uh, provisions in uh, the ordinance uh, affecting the buildings in Honolulu, the fact that they are going to participate in the six month uh, reviews with the city means that uh, everybody will know you know, who's in compliance, whether or not there's a compliance issue, uh, because it makes, a, it makes a difference. Because if nobody's complying with the statute, with the ordinance, then we have a problem and we need to address that. And if everybody's complying or if there's a, a huge number of people complying, then that is, an, that is an incentive or a motivation for other buildings in town to comply. And so it's really, really important. It's really important for the associations and the licensed professionals out there to know that for the first two or three years of this uh, uh, ordinance, that there is, gonna be uh, there is gonna be a review. So if something isn't going right, or you have some questions, you have an opportunity, and which means that you have an obligation. If you have a concern, you have to let people know. Uh, because after the first three years, there's not gonna be this periodic review. And uh, so for today, that's all I've got for uh, Bill 96. But you know, you have to stay tuned because in six months, we're gonna have our first review of uh, how the uh, ordinance is being implemented. And uh, I invite you now uh, to join us next week for a very interesting uh, program. Today is the last day of the legislature. Yay, I'm so happy. But anyway, today is the last day of the legislature. So next week, Richard uh, Emery and I will be telling you about the bills that made it out of the legislature. And we will know the, uh, w which bills they are by the end of today. And so we will be reporting on them uh, next week, Thursday. So please join us for that episode of Condo Insider. This, these are the bills that passed the legislature. They still have to be reviewed by the attorney general and signed by the governor. And that's gonna take maybe another 60 to 90 days, but we will have more information uh, about that process in our next show. So please join us next week, next Thursday, for our next episode of Condo Insider. Thank you and mahalo. See you then.